Hello YouTube, it's Carrie, and I'm coming at you for Saturday's Proof Weight Loss Surgery Works. Um, this week's topic <laughs> is a good one. I love this topic. So what is the hardest reality uh, post-op as a WLS patient? Um, I hear a lot of things being echoed in everybody's video this week, similar, similar circumstances. And, uh, and mine are, are similar as well in some respects to, to other people's videos. But here's my take on it from beginning to end. <laughs> the number one hardest reality to face as a WLS patient post-op is that complications can happen. Uh, I am living proof of it. <laughs> you want proof of weight loss surgery, all the stuff that happens? All right, here we go. So, uh, as I may have mentioned before, in my original surgery, which was back in 2009, it was a mini gastric bypass, and I was severely over bypassed. At the time, I did not know it. Um, as a result of that over bypass, and we're talking like a bypass, when the, the uh, revision surgeon, when I had my uh, post-surgical appointment with him, he let me know um, that my bypass was almost my entire small intestine. So you could just imagine, um, I was lactose intolerant, uh, gluten intolerant. I had severe reactions to certain types of fats, like animal fats. Uh, so if I ate a fatty piece of meat, I would have like, like horrible, I don't know if it was the gallbladder attack or what, but I would be vomiting bile, like straight up bile, corrosive stuff, um, which in turn ruined my teeth. Uh, so I had to get a lot of dental work done because of that. That's something that people don't think about when they consider what kind of surgery they're going to get. Um, and you know what? To tell you the truth, I had heard about that as a um, complication postoperatively from my surgery on some of the boards. But every time somebody said something like that, other people would come in and say, oh, I didn't have that complication. What makes you think it's from your, your surgery and not just... Uh, what would have happened anyhow? Well, I'll tell you, when I went to the dentist, they asked me if I had severe colitis because I had the same damage in my mouth as would be a, a patient that had severe um, colitis. Um, so that, that was part of it. All, all of the um, food intolerances were really uh, problematic. Um, and particularly because of my over bypass, the scariest thing was that in my 10th month of weight loss, I had already surpassed my goal by about 20 pounds and I was losing at a rate of 15 pounds a month. I'm 5'5". Five five. My weight should be like between, I mean, really upper and lower range should be between like 130 and 145. I was at 130, I had a tremendous amount of excess skin, and I was still losing weight at a very rapid pace. Uh, of course, this is because I was eating as a WLS patient should, but uh, my body was absorbing absolutely virtually nothing. Um, so it was basically as if I was um, surgically starved uh, for, for like a year. Um, when that happened, I started freaking out. Uh, I hired a nutritionist. I had to get in as many calories as possible without um, interfering with all of my food intolerances. This was quite a challenge. I had to carry around uh, a bag of food with me everywhere that I went. I had to eat uh, potato, potato chips as a matter of course because it was something that I didn't have a reaction to and it was high in calories. So in order to stabilize my weight loss, I had to shove as much food in my face as possible. And I was actually eating from 6 o'clock in the morning continuously till 12 o'clock at night when I went to bed. Um, when I went to the MGB community for support, there are many, many lovely, supportive people in that community. But you also have to understand that these are people who, uh, all of them, we were all formerly morbidly obese. Um, it was excessive eating, for sure, that got us all there to begin with. 
And I think that some people would think that, oh, well, geez, I didn't hit my goal. I wish I had that problem. And that was the reaction I got from many. And when you are looking for support because you are scared that you are going to die, that is not the reaction that you want to hear. And I have to say, anybody um, reading comments from somebody experiencing complications, somebody who's worried, somebody who's in a bad situation, think hard and long before you post a comment like that. There are a lot of ways to lose weight. You could, you could become a heroin addict and lose weight. You could get cancer and have to go through chemotherapy treatments. You could have AIDS and be dying and lose weight. Nobody wants to have those problems. Nobody wants to have a problem that you feel insecure about how it's going to be resolved and you feel that your life is at risk. The reaction in that support community was so messed up. I had to leave that community almost permanently. I only recently came back and popped my head in there and be like, oh, if anybody wants to know what's going on about me, here's some of my updates. Um, but that was... Uh, the funny thing is this, I remember the night before surgery and, and even on the gurney being wheeled into surgery thinking, oh, I hope they give me a long bypass. Oh boy. Watch what you wish for. Um, yeah. Things have to be done the healthy way. Um, it was such a relief when I had uh, my revision, but I had true worries and for good reason because my over bypass with my MGB and the complications that resulted from it really made me have to learn, truly actively learn, to eat beyond my surgery. Because with um, any type of a gastric bypass surgery, you're only supposed to be eat a small amount. And so I had to learn to eat throughout the day. Uh, Post-surgically from my revision, I had to completely start over and relearn how to eat, but I was already thin. So the impetus wasn't so strong on learning those habits, uh, but just playing sort of with maintenance. But I never learned how to do the right thing. So um, in a way, it was almost inevitable that I was going to regain a massive amount of weight uh, because I knew I could eat all day long. And the minute I had the revision, I could eat carbs again. I could eat lactose again. I, um, the sugar was still a problem, so that, not so much. Um, you know, and then beyond that, after that, I ended up getting another major complication, which was the severe anemia. Um, you would never have surgery thinking, oh, well, what if I go traveling and get a parasite? <laughs> Maybe something with bypass is not, like, I don't know how... Doctors are going to handle that. And in fact, when that happened, I went looking on the net. I called the drug company even. Uh, and I was looking on, on PubMed and everything like that for any kind of a study or a case in which there was a gastric bypass patient who had a parasitic infection that it was up in, in the bypassed area and how effectively the medication was used to treat that. I found nothing on that. I had to do multiple courses of the medication in order to make sure. The fact that the medication does go into your bloodstream uh, as well and that the parasite was eating my blood is probably the only thing. Like I was worried that if it didn't work, they were going to have to somehow do like a an active scan and inject medication into that area in order to get it to um, the parasite. <laughs> so complications can happen. Number two, regain can happen. And in fact, it's likely to happen. If you look at long-term studies of WS patients, it shows that about that the three or four year mark, that's when things can happen. Well, like I said before, with my revision surgery, I was able to eat a whole bunch of foods that I couldn't eat before. Pasta. I love, I mean, I grew up in Italy. I love pasta. It was always something, you know, that was like ubiquitous with our meals. And um, being able to eat it again was like, ah. And so I started eating pasta. And, uh, oh boy, <laughs> did that ever have an effect? Not as much so when I was still in Rotan and I had was a very, very active lifestyle I was living and I was going diving all the time and I was walking all over the island. Um, 
it didn't affect it there because I was burning those calories off. But as soon as I got back home and got more into a sedentary lifestyle, bam, they came on. I gained probably 10 pounds within the first week of getting back. And I was like, oh, look, I look pretty good right now. Um, didn't stay that way because I kept on gaining. Um, slow at first and then really, really rapidly uh, when the depression and the uh, anemia hit. Then it was like boom, boom, boom. Um, and before I knew it, I was back at 250 pounds. I was back at morbidly obese. I was back at being severely asthmatic and not being able to be comfortable when I slept. Uh, you know, it, it was like no time happened. I, I opened my eyes one morning and all of a sudden I was back to being morbidly obese. Um, it absolutely can happen and you have to actively watch out for it. Uh, you have to know what things uh, in your lifestyle will bring the, those pounds back on, uh, such as going back to refined carbohydrates, um, eating foods that are trigger foods, uh, eating foods that will um, trigger a hunger response later, that, that, that whole insulin cycle, um, uh, becoming completely sedentary and not having some kind of activity every day in your life. All those things are what you need to watch out for and make sure that the stress and, and depression and other things that happen in life don't uh, make you tumble back into those old habits. So learning the habits and making them a daily part of every day of the rest of your healthy life is probably one of the most important and most vital lessons that you will learn as a post-op weight loss surgical patient. Um, okay, number three, this is really, good. so being thin and healthy and at your goal does not solve all of your problems. You're still going to have stress in your life. You're still going to have, you know, insecurities from time to time uh, be, because it, there's, it's not a panacea for everything bad in life. It's a panacea for your health if you do things properly and if you focus on eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle, yes. But you can't control the rest of the world. <laughs> the rest of the world is still the unknown. So you've got to kind of brace yourself and be ready for that. Okay, yes, this has solved this part of issues in my life that are making me unhappy. But those other things are still going to be there. And some things might change uh, because of the weight loss. You know, you, you can't help somebody else's insecurity about how they feel about you, and and that will definitely overflow into your life. Um, so yeah, beware of depression, relationship issues, uh, losing friends, jealousy issues from people, and even sickness. Um, all those things can still happen. And, uh, you know, you have to prepare yourself not only for a healthy lifestyle, but at, I think uh, learning ways to cope with things uh, mentally and emotionally are also part of that journey. Uh, learning how to handle stresses as they come to you in ways that are um, healthier and more constructive to you. That's extremely important. Uh, all right, number four. This is the, I, I don't know, this is almost one of the biggest ones for me. Um, it's not about getting to goal weight. <sighs> Who would have thought that, right? Because every, oh, you're going to set, the first thing you do when you have your surgery is like, go and talk to your doctor and set your goal weight, right? It's not about the goal weight. Because the fact is, if you're doing the right things, goal weight's going to happen. Your body's going to stabilize at the right place as long as you're doing the healthiest things that you can. Um, you know, Wendy has, has talked a lot about uh, good, better, best options instead of uh, yes, you can have. No, you can't have. And um, I absolutely agree with that. Um, if you were just interested in getting to goal weight and fitting into a size six or whatever your goal is, um, you're not necessarily going to do it the right way, right? Uh, there's all these people who are talking on the boards now about this ice cream, I don't know, some kind of protein ice cream. Yo, it's still ice cream. 
right? When you get to that point where somebody offers you the real thing and your dumping syndrome isn't as bad or you don't have that, you're going to be able to eat that. Your willpower to say no to it and your understanding to choose a better option won't be there because you've relied on a fake version of something that's a trigger food that got you, that lent to the problem to begin with. Uh, I don't believe in those foods. Uh, I really, I think that they can be a trap. Um, so it's not about getting to a goal. It's not about uh, finagling your your uh, numbers in whatever way that you can still have the things that you think that you want and still get down to goal, particularly in, you know, everybody in the first year, you're losing weight like crazy. You're like, you haven't been this size in forever. It's extremely exciting. And you think you know it all. You don't. Listen to your elders. Listen to your WLS elders, the people who've been down that road, who've had regain at eight years out. You know, what, what happened in their life that got them that way? And what were they doing beforehand? I know for me, because I was not establishing those healthy habits, it was so easy for me to slip back into the, the old patterns of eating of like, um, you know, uh, numbing myself with food. Uh, because I didn't want to think about the other problems in my life, you know, um, and not knowing what the right thing to eat was, even though I, I knew, you know, um, it allowed myself too, too much leeway for that. Uh, so it's not about the numbers. It's a, it's about the lifestyle, you know, and that's a much, that's, that's a much harder reality to take. You know, you, you can't cheat your way out of it. You've got to do the right thing. Because eventually it's going to catch up with you one way or another, whether it be a 10 pound to 30 pound regain or whether it be 100 pounds plus. It's still going to affect your health. The way that you're conducting your lifestyle is still going to affect your health, even if you're thin. Um, and you won't get the right benefits out of it that was intended. Um so getting there is easy. Maintenance is where it gets tricky. It's it's really not about goal. It's more about your entire lifespan from there out, um, which is maintenance. Um, it ain't over. After the honeymoon, you can still get that spark back. Okay, so that's the, the good part of this is that if you end up on that regain side, your tool is still there. Don't think that you – before you go immediately to get a revision because you think your pouch is stretched out – uh, because you think you can't do it without a surgical method. Get some support. Join a group. I mean, Wendy's group is great. I, I, I sh you know, I, I knew I was going to need some help for the last part because I never really had to establish those healthy habits. And um, it really, really is beneficial in keeping you focused, keeping you um, reminded of everything that you have to do on a daily basis. Um, uh, so it's about living the rules of healthy habits every day of your life until you die old and happy. Um, truly, that's what it is. So that's my video for this week. Hope you guys are all doing well. See you next week. Bye. Bye.